a third of Americans are happy. One third. This is crazy to me that our default is so negative, that we are generally so unhappy. So let's break this down. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. So it starts with you. Success, whatever that is for you. Define success right now in your mind. What is your version of success? When you got it, it starts with you. You need the ability and the belief that you can achieve something in your life, that you are not this inanimate object that has no free will, no choice, and no ability to become something better or great, right? So we can all agree that we have choice and we have capacity. Fair? Okay. So once you have th that capacity, we all have a vision of some sort. Something that we aspire to. For now, let's call that self-actualization. This idea of reaching potential. I want to reach my potential, and I believe that I have the ability to reach my potential. So therefore, I see this as an attainable goal. So everybody that has a goal in their mind, that thing you would do if you knew you couldn't fail, does anyone believe that their idea is unattainable? Okay, so we're good there. Everyone's got something in mind that they would do if they could, that they can attain. Awesome. So now we'll just call this an objective. Because this could be as simple as getting an A in math. Or in my case, it was getting an A in language arts. That was an impossibility for me. So that would be my objective. My vision is I want to ace that class. Now, step three is I need to start making progress towards that thing. Now, my path to progression in the past never got me to this goal because I did all the wrong things. But ideally, what we learn is we have adversity and conformity that comes into us and we say, oh, I can't. I failed the first test, therefore I'm screwed, therefore whatever. I'll take my C and I'll call it good. Hopefully one day I can get into a good school. But I really don't care. Didn't care. And so, so many times we have an objective we believe it, we want it badly, we start going to the gym and lifting weights, or we start eating better, and then what happens? Brent gives me a box of Oreo cookies, and it's, it's over. Or whatever, right? We, how many times have you set a goal to do something important to you, and then you got stopped? Some adversity, some force, let's talk startups, right? Some other person or some other idea or something stops you dead in your tracks. Have you guys felt that before, experienced that before? Okay, that's the norm. That's what we're most, most of us are accustomed to. So here's the idea. The goal is alignment. The goal is to take our vision, that thing that we want most, and align our progression. The, this is the action that we take. It needs to be in alignment with our vision. So here's a few examples of where this breaks down. Have you ever met somebody that is a dreamer? They have crazy ideas, but they just never get off the couch and do anything about them? Okay, we know those people. Sometimes we are those people, right? Do you know somebody that works their tail off, like crazy hard worker, but has no idea what they're doing or where they're going? Have you ever felt like that? You're working, 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 but you just, you're not getting anywhere. You feel like you're aimless in your direction. Doesn't matter, you could double down on your work ethic and you still wouldn't feel like you got anywhere. So this, this alignment is so powerful. And a lot of times we set really ambitious goals and we realize that this progression that we're making is kind of going in the right direction but it's nowhere near close to where we really want to get to. This happens, I'll give you a really interesting example. Let's take the Olympics for example. Imagine being in the summer games and being the fastest runner in Canada, uh, Mexico, United States, or not, yeah, United States, any country except Jamaica. And you go to the Olympics and you feel like the man or the woman. You're the fastest runner. You feel very victorious. You feel very self-actualized in that thing, right? You feel good about your performance and who you are and where you're at. And then you go and you get lined up next to Usain Bolt. And he could run backwards and still beat you in a 100-meter dash. 
what happened? How do you feel after that? Where are you at? How successful do you feel now? Not very, but what changed? What changed in your life? Because yesterday you were incredibly successful, right? You ran into adversity. Okay, you ran into adversity, but what else changed? You're out of alignment now. Because why? You lost. You lost. So this, yeah, this objective, the st call this the standard. The standard changed. Now it's clear up here, and now your vision quickly shifted with it because you're like, well, that's where I've got to be. But everything else in your life is out of alignment. So I use the word alignment a lot. And there's been a lot of times where I've been in a job or in a role or doing something that felt good at one point, but then quickly lost all of its appeal. It was no longer satisfying to me because my objective changed. Or perhaps I realized that I wasn't able to make progress towards that thing. See, adversity, this is where adversity comes in and becomes a really powerful thing. Who's been incredibly discouraged about their abilities or their potential at one point or another in your life? Okay, the majority of people do what? Quit. But if you can take a step back and say, this is great. This is exactly what I need to adjust my direction and realign with my potential. So whether that is going to the gym and changing my workout or getting a coach to help me, whatever that is, I need to remove the blocks and I need to figure out how to align my vision and my progression together. So can somebody share an example of an area of your life where you feel like you're dialed in incredibly successful? It's going well. What, what's, that, what's that for you? Okay, what do you do? Is that what you do for work? Yeah, I build tiny homes. You build tiny homes. Okay. So, what's your objective? Like, what, what's your goal in that job? Making the most perfect house ever. Okay. Making it the way the clients want it. Okay. And so, you feel like you understand the vision of what you're trying to accomplish, and you have the skill set to be able to meet that objective. Yeah. Okay. So, for you, that's a good thing. You're happy there. But what's the next step? When does that shift for you? When do you feel like that's no longer good enough? Because I think you're already there. I'm not in charge. <laughs> you're not in charge, yeah. right? So interesting. As much as you can say, yes, I am dialed in and I'm successful in that thing, if you're really being honest with yourself and if you allow yourself to go there, what just happened? This, this just shifted, didn't it? And so if you're being honest with yourself long term, are you really happy about what you're doing? No. No? And is that a bad thing? No, it's a... It's pushing me to move and be better. <laughs> right. It's a beautiful thing. See, life is a series of these. And it's a series of progression. It's this self-actualization. It's constantly raising the bar. It's constantly progressing and trying to get more and more out of life. And it's realizing that... I know there's a number of people in this room that I've talked with before that start a project or start a, an idea or something and they quickly lose interest and they just and they drop it. It just loses its appeal after a year, a month, a few days, a few minutes and then they say well I just don't know what that is for me but if you take a step back and say what's the common theme sometimes we're shooting way too long term to realize the success of what we're doing but it's important and it's critical to put ourselves in situations where we're constantly having to raise the bar. So I would submit that every runner that got their clocks cleaned in the last summer games is going back to the drawing table and saying, what is he doing different than what I'm doing, right? What's the secret to his success? Yes, he's super tall, and, but what is he really doing that I can't do? And can he really do that? And, and at some point you might realize that you, you realign yourself address any things that are holding you back, getting rid of all of these blocks, and then moving forward. So this whole concept, this whole model, success is a progressive realization of a worthy ideal. It's in the journey. It's never in the destination. So the sooner you can get comfortable with the idea that no accomplishment is ever going to make you feel satisfied. 
it will never make you feel whole or complete. There's nothing that you can acquire by way of material possessions, size of a company, the number of dollars in your bank account or homes or cars you own that will ever make you feel successful. It's impossible. On the other hand, the things that will make you feel successful are the things that allow you to progress, to self-actualize. And that's where you should focus your time and your energy and your life. So let's bring purpose again back into the equation. Let's say, what is it where I feel like I can truly progress? I'll give you an example. As a father, my ability to connect with my kids. This is embarrassing. I don't know why I'm telling you this, but I, my son had a soccer tournament this, this weekend. And they were down one goal, and there was a foul, and it was a PK. And this, my, my son's friend came up to him with the ball in his hand, and he held the ball, and he put it in my son's hand. He says, are you confident? And my son said, I'm confident. I've got this. He says, go for it. He gave him the ball. He should have taken. He's a great soccer player. And my son put the ball down, lined himself up, and just literally grazed the post and put it in the corner. And I literally, like, I couldn't help it. It brought me to tears. Like, I got choked up watching a soccer game. And it brought me just directly in touch with this idea that I was progressing through my kids or through my son at that time. And that was more powerful than most things I'd experienced that week. It reminded me that earlier in the week, I guest lectured for a, a professor here, met some of you, and I left feeling like, and I got messages afterwards, and I left feeling like I actually made a difference. Like I think some of those ideas connected and might actually change and help somebody. And I felt this idea that I helped somebody else progress in that moment. And that gave me an incredible, a powerful level of confidence and fulfillment that I don't get from the gift card that he might send me for speaking to his class. So what I'm saying is the more that we start to live in the areas where we feel like we can truly progress, and the more that we can derive the value and the meaning that we gain from life around our purpose and those things in which we can progress, the more happy we'll become. See, what's the problem in America is that we're chasing outcomes, destinations, and they leave us wanting. And the things that we think are happy, so we go to Instagram and we put pictures and we do things because that allows us to feel significant, right? But how, has anyone ever really felt satisfied after they got a certain number of likes? It's always, why didn't I get more, right? Like there's always something more to get from that. It will never make you happy. Neither will driving a super nice car. So let's just move on. Let's redefine what those things are. I love cars and I fully intend on driving nice cars, but not because it's going to make me feel significant and not because that's going to help me derive some meaning and purpose in my life. That's not the point. I'm going to focus on the things that allow me to create significant value and allow me to progress. And the more people that I can help progress, the more that I'll feel that same progression. So now, what is that for you? What is that thing you want to do and accomplish? And how is that connecting with you on this progression level? How is that helping you realize who you are? Who's got an example of something that they're really low on? Need somebody brave. Okay. Physical. Physical. Okay. Uh, be specific. I'm a skinny white dude. I didn't have any muscles. Okay. No matter how hard I go to the gym, I never, I never gain weight. Okay. <laughs> okay. So let's. Okay. So that. So what, what would you give yourself on a scale of one to ten? Probably a four. A four. Okay. Does anyone have a zero before we can proceed here? So let's go back. Let's say. Okay. What is what is your objective? I want to look like Superman. <laughs> okay, which Superman? Uh, Henry Cavill. Okay, let's be specific. What does that look like? How much do you weigh? Uh, 170. Okay. But the perfect ideal would be like 280 ish. You want to weigh 280 pounds <laughs> of yeah. pure muscle? Yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> hey. See, okay, this, there's something really important here. 
Specifics. Bob, what show is that from? You've got to be specific. <laughs> It's not just, I don't want to look like Superman. I want to know exactly what that means. For us, to really reach, for us to really reach an objective, we've got to be specific on what we want, right? So you want to weigh 280 pounds. Are you getting some feedback right now? <laughs> okay, what's, a, what's an acceptable weight for him? Okay, fair. Somewhere in the middle, right? Okay, so that's your objective. You want to get to a level of physical health that's a 10. And you can articulate that. What's missing right now? You know what you want, so your vision's there. What's, what's lacking? I think just the discipline right now. Okay. Going to the gym every day, healthy diet, and all that stuff. Okay. So you can recognize right now what it is that you need to do to get to that level, but you're just not doing it. Yeah. Why aren't you doing it? Okay, it comes back to why. Your why is not there. It's not the most compelling thing. You, this is a really interesting point that I'm going to kind of derail for a second. We'll talk about goals in another session, but you have an expectation, and you're hitting your expectation. And I would submit that everybody is in a position in their lives right now that is on par with what they actually expect to be. So we are where we expect to be. And if you want, unfortunately, you may say, oh, no, that's not true. I want more. But that's not what your expectation is. You set goals, but we always seem to settle on the baseline, the minimum, the expectation, what we know we can't drop below. And so the challenge for you is to say, how important is that really? Now, is that causing you distress in your life? Not really. Can anyone think of something in their life that's actually causing them distress? Something that they're not achieving, that they want to be achieving, that's actually causing them pain? Okay. My physical health. Okay. okay. Um, I know that where I'm at right now, I'll probably be here for a very, very long time. I'll never really push past where I want to be. I'll be Okay. Why do you know that? Because of the health conditions that I've been diagnosed with. Okay. That I know are prevalent and that I need to change. Okay. Interesting point to bring up, right? So you have, we talked about ability, capacity, right? You have two choices. You can live your life with an objective that exceeds your capacity, physical like limitations, like you, you know what your limits are. Now, let's not get too, in the, we could get in the weeds and say, okay, but you, could you potentially overcome something? And through mir miraculous whatever, we know people that have done amazing things. So let's not go there right now. But let's say you've got a choice. If the goal was for you to feel happy and successful in your life, you've got a choice. You can maintain the objective that was prior to what you've been diagnosed with and know that you'll never attain that. And so therefore you will always be out of alignment, right? And then therefore never feel happy. Agreed? Have you been there? Or do what? Okay. Adjust your perspective in that thing and then seek to potentially build around that with, a, with an understanding of what the parameters are or what the expectation is, what's possible, the greatest thing that you can, self-actualization and reaching, being the best you can be in that state, how do you progress there? But I think sometimes that requires you to adjust your perspectives. And I'm not an advocate of selling out or dropping your standards below what you're capable of becoming. But I also acknowledge that there are certain things that are not physically possible. And you then, therefore, have the choice to decide if I want to be happy or not. You can't change the past. It's a great example, right? Can't change the choices that we've made. And we definitely can't control things that happen to us. But we can choose how to feel about those things. And in a sense, a lot of that is potentially adjusting the, the ideal or the perspective, the standard that you're measuring yourself by to be happy. And what's more important, for you to live in 
distress because you're not there or to figure out how to live a life of purpose and meaning knowing that you're doing the very best you can. So that's an adjustment I think you need to make. Would you agree? Do you feel like you can make that adjustment? Okay. See, there's some great, you should read Man's Search for Meaning. You read that? The story of Viktor Frankl? It's a powerful book. But it's just this idea that, so he was in a concentration camp. And everything was taken from him. Everything was taken from him. Except for his mind. He, they, they, they couldn't take his soul. They couldn't, they couldn't take him of his one freedom that he had. That was his right to be him. And they could take everything else. But he was able to maintain his identity in, in through all that, right? So Man's Search for Meaning. It's a great, great book. Thank you for sharing that. And I think it highlights this idea that every one of you, or us, can evaluate our lives right now and find areas where we feel dialed in. We're killing it. And then there's other areas where we're not, where we're really behind. And I would submit that take some time and we write down and we, we sit down and say, what's missing? And what am I really expecting? And is it, ra- is it, is it two interesting cases, two extremely and potentially unattainable goals that maybe need to be cultivated and through trial and error you might realize that I was chasing money in the beginning of my career. I was chasing a startup that was a potentially multi-million dollar company and then I would sell it and then I'd retire. And I realized that that's not the goal that I want to chase anymore because it's going to deprive me of the opportunity to make a difference today. And so I adjusted my course a number of times to ultimately zero in on the thing that connected with my purpose and my potential and the motivations that fuel all that. So can you see how these things all blend together? We're gonna really kind of move on from this internal state of who we are and what we wanna accomplish for the rest of the series now. But what I do wanna make sure is really clear is that we all are striving to understand our purpose. Why are we even here? What is the contribution that you are required and you have the opportunity to make? And if you don't know that now, like we talked about last week, that's fine. But what is that for you? And what is the driving motivation for you? To, what is that why? Why is that so important to you? And how do you fuel that why so that it becomes this obsession, this passion that you must achieve? And then how do we understand this idea that in the journey to get to what we will ultimately live in success, that we'll never get there, so how do we become happy today? Ask yourself right now, are you a happy person, generally speaking? Scale of 1 to 10, how happy are you? Suicide rates and depression rates are spiking like crazy all around us. Are you happy? Because nothing is going to make you happy but you and your ability to decide that you have, in perspective, I have a lot to be grateful for and I have a lot that I can be happy about. Happiness is a choice. It's not an outcome. It's a state. It's a state you can choose to feel. And the hack, if you will, the easiest way to start to feel that happiness is to focus on the progression that you are experiencing. If I am out of shape, for example, I go to the gym for the first time in a long time, I feel like a million bucks after I walk out of that gym. Agreed? What changed? Nothing. I'm still as unhealthy as I was the day before, but I'm making what? Progress. Progress. Live in progress. Live in the progression to the things that matter most to you. I guarantee you there you'll find happiness. And if you're stuck on something and you can't figure out how to get past that hurdle and find happiness in whatever it is you're doing, a job, spiritual, emotional, physical, whatever that is, that's why I'd love to help you with that. And I'd love to challenge the limiting beliefs that you have, those things that you're telling yourself that say you can't do it. Let's challenge those. And let's work through those. Let's validate that they're nothing. And push past those and realize the progression that you can, you can realize.